Good morning everyone, it's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video. Going back into the Primal Demon EX2 beatdown battle to get the free dupe of Misery. Certainly not the best free-to-play unit, but still a free-to-play unit that people should have access to. And we did part one either yesterday or earlier in the week, I don't know when I'm going to release these in what order, but... Um, blue teams have been something that's been very common throughout the year of 2024, so that video was focused on those. Today, we're going to try and change them up a little bit. We're going to use a green team, and then we're going to do some other-ish kind of hodgepodge teams that you can attempt to use. But because this is an old beatdown battle, I will have other videos when it first came out in late March of 2024, you know, showing other teams that I used to clear it alongside today's video and the previous rerun video that I put out. So in, in case this video or that one doesn't really work for you, we've got this five or six month old video that you can also check out as well. Okay, so we're going to run an Exalted Champions team nuking with Space Guy. So he is space, he is AoE, he's magic. It's a synergy focused team though, which this stage has synergy resistance, so it's not going to be the most powerful thing in the world. So we're going to bank on also having the Wind Masked Hero as a secondary kind of backup DPS character. This will work for this stage, it will not work for anything higher because we just do not have the actual damage output that we need. Veldora, necessary. Violet, pretty necessary for this. Rimuru? Uh, you can get away without using him, you just kind of have to play around and maybe push an extra turn, but you're going to need an attack buff that you can hold on Guy and the hero. So you could use Space Reamer if you want, you could use Light Millum if you want. You, you need an alt buff, you need an attack buff, essentially. And then the magic buff, Guy's got the synergy, the hero is AoE, she can steal orbs as well. It is what it is. The element buff from Velzard, yes, but Veldora and his green buff is going to be absolutely key for this as well. So turn one, we don't have we don't have any way to get around this uh, starting hand, but because the stage is still very focused on green orbs, it actually works in our favor. We have a green orb incoming next turn instead of a blue or an orange, so we'll bring a hero and guy in, we'll leave our space characters up front, and we'll just send the four blues, plus some cheeky counterattacks, and that'll get us at least a use of Belzard next turn. And then we get, you know, whatever hand we do get, Belzard can change. It's just, can you get Belzard turn two or not? And if not, then you just have to push an extra turn on top of that. But now we'll bring Veldora in for Violet, use his green buff, and then we'll send him away. And then we'll bring Rimuru in. Now Rimuru, if you have him, has the 70% attack buff, very strong. And then he also has that one turn where he can turn your alt orbs into rainbow orbs. And again, if you have him, great. And if you don't, eh, it, you know, it... It's unfortunate, but we'll send these orbs. Because the greens are nerfed, even with the Veldora buff active, we're not getting as much gauge as you would like to see. So we did alt rush with Guy, and we're gonna need to do it again, because this turn, they need to go away. We do not want them locked up front. The unfortunate part is, is that they attack nerf the hero. I would have really preferred them to attack nerf Rimuru, because he's not the primary damage focus here but we're going to just have to deal with it. So, we'll use the attack buff, we'll use another alt rush from Guy, which is stacking synergy resistance down on them, which will just help us do extra damage, and get us the two EX alts. And then we'll swap them out for these backline characters, who I don't care about getting their alts at all. Like, if, if you get it, great. If you don't, oh well. Uh, but this is the bind turn, and I don't want our mainline units to be binded in. Now, especially if you don't have Rimuru, because if you do have Rimuru, you could leave them in, you could use this one turn to alt swap away, and you have some rainbow orbs and everything hunky-dory. But I'm going to play this as if you don't actually have Rimuru, and that's why I sent them to the back early. And we're just going to send this Rimuru out, it does peanuts for damage. So now we're on turn 5, and now we're not binded in. This entire hand is green orbs, so we don't need to use Velzard here. It's going to convert everything for us, which is nice. And this gives us a chance to get some extra points. But, I don't get a great hand. I don't. Because I would have rather had one Rimuru orb and a, and a Veldora orb, because we need Violet for her magic buff. So we're just going to burn this hand, because there's nothing we can really do about it. 
except send it, because I'm not ready to nuke. I don't have an orb for one of these characters, because I need the violet buff on both of them in order to kill. So we burn the entire hand of normal greens, so we're up to turn six now. And now, thank god, we get one Veldora orb and two Rimarus. Thanks. Whatever. So now we're ready to go. So we'll bring in Guy for Rimuru, we'll bring in the hero for Veldora, and then we'll use the Violet Magic buff, and that's the last... Well, actually, no, we still need to use the Guy buff as well. So, Magic buff, Synergy, we've lowered their Synergy resistance by 20%, and then we're buffing by 40 so I think that should offset their buffs on the defensive side, and then we'll use Velzard to give us the Element buff and the Drago effect and everything and make our whole hand technically nerf greens. But we'll send Guy first, because he lowers magic resistance or defense or something. 362, not enough to kill. And then the hero follows up. She does 209, even with the attack nerf. So if you don't have the hero, you do have Rimuru. You could nuke with Rimuru instead. Like, he's AoE as well. That'll work. Substitutions, you kind of need Violet. You need Guy. Uh, Rimuru, you, you can... If you're not going to use him as a DPS, you can substitute him for another attack buffing character. It, it can work. It's not super great, and it requires a number of EX characters that maybe people don't have, but it can work. Alright, so our first hodgepodge team. We're going to use Ogre's Pride Benny Maru as our protector, because he's stacking alt damage, and then on turn 8 you get the Pierce Power. We're going to activate that Pierce Power using Albus, and then we've brought Rieger again, and free-to-play Summer Memories Romarus. So now we have Romers with a special convert. We have Fount of Wisdom Reamer with his physical buff and his convert with Rieger's convert. Albus has the Pierce, the Pierce resistance down, and the green convert. And we're going to make AoE Summer Millum our DPS character, who has the ability to steal orbs that are blue and give herself a two turn attack and dark attack buff. And then she'll get the attacks, uh, the alt damage from Benny Mario and the Pierce power from Benny Mario. Now, if you don't have Benny Maru, you can substitute in Visions of Coleus Lumi. It's just that without extra synergy power, you'll be able to stack with Milam until the final nuke turn. And then you don't want to use Lumi because you don't want to give her that synergy and nerf her damage. So you can stack her up for seven turns and get her to a respectable attack stat. It's just that turn eight, if you have to use Coleus Lumi, don't, don't use her because <laughs> you're going to hurt your damage output. Alright, so turn one, again, you could use Rieger's Convert, you could use Reamer's Convert, it doesn't really matter. We're going to bring Reamer and Re Re Reameru and Milam up front, because they have Protection Gauge underneath their supports. And we'll get as much stacks with Benny Maru as possible to get that alt damage. And then on turn eight, we get that massive Pierce Power buff. Now that's an unfortunate hand right there. There's nothing we can really do about that, a nat almost a full natural hand of greens. So we're just going to have to live with it, and we're going to have to live with it again on turn 4 after we get out of the bind, because that's when Dino changes all the orbs again. But here, we can make do with this on turn 3, because we can use Reamer's Convert, and then we can use Romerus's Convert. And the reason I brought Romerus is because she's physical. If you don't have Romerus, you could use the free-to-play Light Soka. She also has a special convert. She's just magic, and so she wasn't going to help the EX board for Millum. So that's simply why I brought Romerus. Anybody who's a converter can take the place of Romerus. We don't use her for anything else. If you want to bring another support unit that may or may not have an orb change, like that'll work too. So turn three, going into turn four, we are binded and we have orb changers, but I don't have three, uh, the capability of doing three oranges. So I'm going to use Rieger, pray that we change the one of orbs of his, and then we'll just steal it with Millum and get a full six orb send of Millum, which is now going to give us the EX alt for her. And now she really doesn't need to be up front anymore. So, because Benny Mario right now is only stacking alt damage, and that is universal. So we could leave her up front, we could send her away, we could not use any points and not have to alt swap her. Like, we could do a lot of things. But this entire hand is now green. So we're going to have to, I think, just send it after we get these two stacks of Benny Mario. And yeah, one, two, three, four, five, boom. 273 points, and now we just need to burn two more turns, and they'll be ready to go. We just need to make sure that we can, one, activate Benny Mario on turn eight, and two, 
have enough points to use everything. Which, thankfully, we don't have a lot of big-time buffs with this team. We've got the physical buff with Rimuru, the Pierce buff with Albus, and then Milam's very small 15-point buff that lasts for two turns. So we could either use that now, or we could use it on turn eight. Like, it really, it, 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 again, it doesn't matter. We have a lot of points. What we do want to make sure is that we do get a six-hand send of Milam that hopefully we can steal. So here, we'll alt swap away, we'll orb change, and then we'll bring Romarus in and use her orb change for the last time to give us that next stack. And we'll be ready to go. We'll have two stacks of Benny Maru. We're going to spread the damage out a little bit more. That way everyone is kind of even on their HP levels. And then we get a pretty good hand. We got two greens, two oranges. We have the points necessary to convert that because we're going to bring Rimuru in for Romarus. So we'll do that. Rimuru, would, well, he would have orbs, but we're going to steal them anyways. So buff, buff, buff. Orb change, orb change, and orb steal. Boom, boom. And now full hand of Milim orbs, which is actually kind of necessary because Milim doesn't actually kill in one shot. We crit against... Uh, uh, Dagrel, which is why we killed him, surprisingly. And then Albus took out Frey, and then our follow-up orbs from Milam took out Dino. So, the team does work. Again, if you want to use a different protector, you can use Visions of Coleus Lumi. She's still giving the attack stacks to Octogram Demon Lords, which this Milam is on. It's just that you don't want to have the synergy buff active on turn 8 when you're ready to nuke. Alright, final team we have for the video is going to be a Primal Demon team technically. So we've got Violet back on for her meta, but we're going to nuke with Exalted Champion Guy, who is a space and magic character. It doesn't need to be technically on a green or a blue or an orange team. He's just he's just damage and support. So we're going to put a lot of orb changers here. Free to play Tempest League Gopta has an alt swap and green orb changing. Rieger, once again, making an appearance, orb changing alt swap. Octogram Lumi, who is stacking alt and AoE damage, both of which is going to help uh, Guy out. And then Violet, who's got the magic buff and her own orb changing. And then Guy has his alt rush ability and his synergy power. And we're going to get the attack stacks from Primal Demon Protector Violet. This team works fairly well. Even though we are running a, a synergy unit, we can bypass that because this is just EX2. They don't have that much HP. So it'll work out just fine. Turn one, orb change with Rieger. The same stuff we've been doing for pretty much all of these videos. He's just such a good free-to-play unit to have. And both him and Gopta are just really, really good. So we'll leave Lumi in because she's got the protection gauge for the first three turns. Guy has support under him, which gives him extra attack when we send six blue orbs, which we just did. So he'll get that. And then Violet in the back has Blanc underneath her, so that's turn three protection gauge for both of them. So we'll bring her in. We have a perfect hand for her orb change. Boom. And then we'll use our two stacks of Violet, which is giving her and the other Violet the attack stacks if we need to nuke with the single target Violet, which we don't have to. But now we'll have 150 points. This next turn will be the bind turn, so we need to prepare for that in any way. And that hand was not great, but we can still get out of it because we have multiple orb changers here. We can now use both of Lumi's skills because she needs to go away. So boom, boom, and then the violet orb change. And that leaves us just enough points to use the Rieger uh, orb change. And then we'll take him out for Gobta, I believe. Because Gobta being up front means that we have greens covered. Violet remaining up here means that we have or or oranges covered. Yeah, there we go. Now we swap them out. Means that we have pretty much the entire board covered, and we have an alt-swapping character available to us in Gobta, in case we do get it. Which I don't have yet, so that's fine. But we do have a 2-2-2 two, 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 two spread, which means that bringing Gobta up front was the correct decision. Gotta plan ahead, right? So, stack, stack, orb change, orb change. We can start to alt-rush now, if we have the points available. Every time we alt rush with Guy, we're lowering their synergy resistance by 10%, which if you get a few of those off, we can actually make that work. But I don't actually do that, so okay, whatever. It is what it is. If you want to, you could stack it up like three or four times even, if we have the points, and we can really get that, uh, we can really get that going so our synergy doesn't actually harm our damage at all. But okay, cool. The full hand of greens. 
technically we could get around it. Technically. Uh, orb change there. We will bring Rieger in for Gobta. It takes his alt away, so we just need the double alt swap. We'll use the Violet alt uh, orb change. We'll bring Lumi in. We'll use Violet. We'll use one stack of Lumi, her AoE buff. That's much more impactful than the alt buff really is. And then we'll send this. And we're just working on getting the EX alts naturally for Guy. We're not really using his stacking ability or his alt rushing ability, even though we very much well could if we wanted to. Violet gets her attack lowered, not a big deal. We're still raising it up. And then we could use Lumi's skills again and then take her out for Rieger, pull in that blue orb, and then we could just alt swap an orb chain and call it, uh, call it a day. <clears throat> so that's exactly what we're going to do. We are at maxed out 30% on the AoE buff now, so we don't need to worry about that. Orb change alt buff. This is now up to 60, so we need one more stack of Lumi's alt buff before that's capped out. And we actually don't have enough to alt swap here, which is unfortunate. Because I thought we would have enough, but math is challenging. So we just go ahead and send the four blues. That gets us a certain amount of points back. Thankfully, you get a pretty good hand right here where we just need to alt swap an orb change, and we do have enough points for that. So boom, boom. Can't do anything else, though. So... Does this get us the EX alt? It does. And that's solely because we have the extra alt gauge increase from Lumi's second skill. The AoE buff gives all orbs 50% extra alt gauge. So thankfully, we were able to do this. So now, we'll use the last stack of the alt buff, the magic buff, the synergy buff, the synergy resistance down debuff, and then two stacks of violet, which also leaves us enough points to use another stack of the alt resistance down. And that will allow us to nuke with Guy here and have a full six send. And Guy does uh, one million damage, double the amount that this stage has. So it can work pretty well. And you technically you don't need Protector Violet to do that. Like you could again bring Visions of Coleus Lumi, and she'll stack on them because Guy's an Octogram Demon Lord. So. You could use either or. It's just using Violet does allow us to get the extra uses of skills if we need to do it, which we did use here a couple times, but definitely don't need to have Violet for it. But there we go. There's a few more teams you can use to clear the EX2 stage of the Primal Demon Beatdown Battle Rerun. Again, previous teams that I've used, previous videos will be linked in the video description. But that's it for me. Take it easy, and I'll see you all later.